And you're no stranger to this coming from a similar show uh, like Lost. How do you think From will avoid that level of disappointment? Um, well, here's the thing. I, I had the very same question when, when I got the gig. I was like, listen, like I love being on Lost and everybody dug it, but I don't want to walk around like I just did. Like everybody going like, did you like that ending? I mean, cause <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like. What's up everybody, it's me E-Man from E-Man's Movie Reviews. In case you hadn't heard, From is a horror mystery series that is currently one of the best shows on television. If you don't believe me, then I'd ask you to try out the From Challenge. All you gotta do is watch the first eight minutes of the show. If you're not interested, then walk away. But if you are remotely curious in what happens next, then you have to finish the rest of the first season. Anyway, I've got a chance to catch up with some of the cast to talk about the series. Check it out. Now, this show has been doing a phenomenal job with building suspense and hyping things up all the way to the very end. And you're no stranger to this coming from a similar show uh, like Lost uh, that had people captivated all the way to the very end. However, with that show, a lot of some fans felt pretty disappointed with the way it ended. How do you think From will avoid that level of disappointment? Um, well, here's the thing. I, I had the very same question when, when I got the gig. I was like, listen, like I love being on Lost and everybody dug it, but I don't want to walk around like I just did. Like everybody going like, did you like that ending? I mean, cause <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, there's a lot. And so they were like, they were like, listen to me, listen, we actually have this show written out. We, we were also part of that. We also, we also got that blowback. We know how to tell the story. It's not 22 episodes a year, it's 10, it's succinct. We answer some questions, we pose some others, and then we go to the end. So lay back, trust us. And I was like, for real, but for real? And they were like, yes, for real. <laughs> so uh, that's, uh, that's, that's what I know. And I know that these, both of these guys, Jeff Pinkner and, and Jack Bender, both not only know how to tell stories, but like they they were part of that lost thing too, and uh, and and none of us want that smoke anymore. We don't we don't we don't want to deal with the, the the not answering questions. But for the post, for the first part of it, yeah, there's a lot of cliffhangers. We want you to keep coming back. We want you to enjoy it. We want you to enjoy the people that enjoy the ride. But we want you to come back. And if we wrap it all up, you you could be you know like ah I know how it ends and move on. So. That, that, that's how I think we, we, we change, we, we address all that stuff. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna need you to carry some more bug spray next time. <laughs> <laughs> that may or may not have helped. I don't know what kind of, you see those trees, they're all over the place. What kind of spiders are these? <laughs> So I'm going to start off with Ian first, if you don't mind. The town kind of feels representative of like small towns, you know, like that that feeling of, where you can't ever leave, you can't escape, right? And as someone who grew up in like uh, Santinez Valley, can you talk about how that informed your character's transition in dealing with the town in season two? Well, hey, Emmanuel, uh, E-Man. Uh, the, yes, it, it is. There, I did uh, grow up in two places, Malibu and then San Inez, but from when I was, yeah, sixth grade till I graduated high school, I was in a relatively small town. And there is the feeling of wanting to, even though even though this place, San Inez, is so beautiful, uh, I, I also wanted to get the hell out. I had <laughs> big dreams and they weren't going to happen there. So that totally resonates with the desire to, to in for our situation and from, to get back to a life which for Jim is to build amusement parks and roller coasters and raise a family and be in love and have a enjoy life outside of this nightmare place. So he will do anything to, to, to escape this place. And I also feel like the allegory totally resonates in the last few years with what everyone's gone through with feeling like, or and being, you know, told that you shouldn't leave your house and you should look at everybody else like a potential disease vector and stay away. And there's terror and fear all over the place. So I understood that, that 
it might really catch on uh, in in that respect. And I feel like the 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 creatives in this show they take they're passionate about it and they really take a lot of care and there's a lot of details and specificity. And then I can just connect right into that um, because, you know, you know, the thing like the, the, the universal is in the specificity. So we've got that going on in the show in spades. I love it. Thank you so much, Catalina. Um, so, okay. Your character, what's your favorite aspect of Tabitha in, in season two, that's different from season one. I think it's a continuation from what's happening in season one. Cause in season one, she's treating her children not as babies, but as, you know, they have to grow. I mean, like they're stuck in this town. They have to understand that this world is, that we are in now, it's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. And you can bubble wrap them and, you know, treat them as precious things. And I think what's happening in season two is that she's learning from her children, which I think it's, as a mother, I have that all the time. Like I learn from my kids and there's, I don't know what episode it is, but you know, she starts listening to what the kids are saying and she starts, you know, realizing that what, what the children are saying, it's, it's right for her. And uh, it's kind of like mirroring what, what they're saying. Am I making myself clear? Oh yeah, for sure. Right. So it's, it's a continuation, which is great. Mm -hmm. Because season one starts with her kind of like letting them go. Mm -hmm. And this season is just learning from them, which is, mm -hmm. it happens to me all the time with my kid. So no, that, that totally makes sense. I'm a parent too. I'm learning from my kids every day. Um, just one real quick question for the both of you. You're both stuck in the town. What are you picking? Colony house or the town? <laughs> I'm picking town for town? sure. Yeah. Ian? Yeah, town, because that's that's town? that's that that's the focus to uh, that's where you that's where you mean business to get that to, to get out for sure. Perfect, <laughs> perfect. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell for notifications because I will be covering this series on a weekly basis, and I'm gonna give breakdowns and different types of videos throughout this whole series. As of right now, season two of From is available. You can also watch the first season of From for free on Amazon Prime Video or MGM+. Plus. You can also watch the new season and the new episodes of From on MGM+, Plus with a paid subscription. I'll include some links in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all soon.